Yo, yo, I'm Mix Mo the Merman, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, just taking delivery of this Cobra Fortis 20B cylinder mower, which I've got for around about two weeks for purpose of review. And in today's video, I'm gonna be doing an unboxing, how to set up and uh, get your cylinder mower all ready for the lawn. And then in future videos, I'm gonna be doing other videos to show you how to maintain your machine, should you wish to do so, oil changes, that sort of stuff. Or if you wanna adjust your belts or adjust the cylinders, there'll be much more videos coming out um, in the near future on how to maintain a bit of equipment, which would be great. And then uh, hopefully you guys and girls have a much better understanding on how to set this machine up, how, how it operates, how it works, and hopefully it'll help you out. If it's your first time in watching Mixed Mother Mother Man, hit the subscribe button or whack the old bell, sit notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I've got another video. So without further ado, let's get down dirty. Let's get this big box unpacked. Oh, I love a big box. Wowzers, the sun's coming out. Okay, so when you get your nice big box from Cobra, this is how it's gonna turn up. It's gonna turn up on a pallet, all cellophane up, all secure, good to go. Now, this machine is quite heavy, okay? So you may need one or two of you to, uh, to help unbox it. All what you can do is uh, take the lid off. Take the lid off, put that at one side. Oh, big box. And inside here is your mower, of course, right? But as I say, it is, it is quite heavy. The, the weight of these uh, machines, the, the 14 inch is 74 kilos, the, the um, 17 inch is 83, the 20 inch is 89 kilos, and the 25 is about 104 kilos. So it is super, super heavy. So don't do your back, okay? What you can do is you can just tear up the side of a box with a pair of scissors standing by, just be careful. Tip the, um, tip the side down and then you can then assemble it and then roll the lawnmower out, that may be easy for you. But if you've got someone with you um, that can lift it out the box, then, then do that. But if not, then just, just do it with ease and, and roll it out the side of the box if you don't want to keep the box at it, okay? I don't recommend tipping it all up, so that's not good. So let me get it out the box, that's what I'm gonna do first, and I'll put it back onto the bench and show you what it looks like as if it was in the box, and then we'll get it put together. Okay, Cobra Fortis 20B, now all up on the bench. <coughs> now I'm gonna say, <coughs> That's heavy, okay? Uh, compared to some other types of cylinder mowers, this comes in, I would say, around about nearly 20 kilos heavier, okay? So, as I say, make sure you've got a bit of help. I had some help to get it out, out the box because I need to send the box back after the review. So, you may want to tear the box down the side and then uh, put it together, half assemble it in the box, take the brake off and what have you, which I'll show you, and then just wheel it outside the box. That may be easier for you, or maybe build a little, like, little ramp for it so you don't damage the machine, but just, what I'm trying to say is be careful. Now, I've got to wear my sunglasses because <coughs> the sun is right in front of me <coughs> and uh, I have a, uh, a stigma in my eye, which doesn't make it any, <coughs> any easier for me to, uh, to look straight forward. So, in the box, you will get, um, your, obviously, a Cobra lawnmower. You'll get that. You'll get your grass bag, which is made of plastic, uh, metal hooks on, on the side and what have you. It looks really, really durable, <coughs> really solid. So that's never going to rustle or anything like that. And it's a, it's a good size um, grass box as well. The grass box is on these. This is a 75 litre grass box and the 17 inches comes with a 65. The 14 inch comes with a 55 and the 25 one comes with a 90 litre grass box. Okay, so just a bit of information there. You may not require the 20, you may require sort of a, the 14 or the 17. It may, you may want either either. Let me get rid of a grass box. Okay, so with this lawnmower, you also get a nice little tool bag you get a, a height adjustment setting bar, which we'll show you, I'll show you how to use it a bit later on. It comes with a Phillips screwdriver. It comes with a, uh, a box spanner for your spark plug. It comes with a little tiny metal ruler for testing your height of cut. And it also comes with <coughs> um, a, nice full a nice 13 mil um, Allen wrench and a uh, 34 to 36 tool as well there. So you've got some nice tools. Also, you've got your user manual here as well. Which, is, which looks to be quite comprehensive. So make sure you check all your safety instructions before you do anything else with the machine. So that's good. So to set your machine up, now you may have to do this, <coughs> some of this inside the box, as I say. Now the advantage is, because the, uh, the brakes all tied back, the machine will not, will not roll backwards, okay? It, it will lock. <coughs> so it'll only roll forwards. So that's good. So the first one I wanna do, uh, you've got two things to do on here, really. You've got your brake to fit on, around the back, which we do it later on. And then you've got your main handlebars, okay? Uh, which should go up here. So before we do anything, you wanna grab your 13 mil uh, ring spanner. 
and around the side here, there are um, two um, nylon locking bolts that need to, come on, need to come off first. So there's a nut and a washer on one side, so just put them down separately, and the same on the other side. That one's a little bit tighter uh, by hand. So just take those off. Now you may need two people to do this for you, but my second person has gone home. So what we're going to do is gently, without scratching any paintwork, is put your handles on. Now just make sure all your cables are rooted right. Once you've got them rooted, you can then just hold it like so and grab your first, your first plastic um, part of the handle and just feed that one through all the way, all the way, like so, and then just with one hand holding it, just gently drop the washer. So it is doable, one person. Just get that one started. And then lift the handle up, and then just slowly nick that one up with, with a ratchet spanner. Once, it, once the nylon locker takes hold, you can then just nip that one up. Once it's half nicked up, you can then move on to the other side. So just half nick that one up. That'll just hold that roughly in place. And you can then just clamp that handle down into position. And that, that will then hold it, okay? You can then come around the other side just grab my other washer. I went for went for a Burton in the in the brake bag. You can then grab your other your other side, open the handle up like so, and then feed that one in. Now this will be under spring tension now because the other side's done up. Push it all the way through, and then just nick that one up. That's all perfectly doable. Nick that one up. Not too tight because you want to make sure you've got enough room to do to close the handle down. It'll be about there, and then pull the handle up. And if it won't lock up, it's because you've gone too tight. So loosen it off slightly, and just keep going until it locks into place. That's locked. That's locked. So now the handles are, are good to go. That's the first part of the uh, assembly done. Okay, with that part now done, up top here with a pair of scissors. You just want to carefully cut the cable tie that's uh that's on there and that will then release uh the, br the brake mechanism which will now allow the, the roller to um roll and the, and the cylinder motor to roll backwards and forwards so take that bit off i'll put that to one side now with the the brake levers uh, and the cylinder levers now disconnected there's one more thing to do which would be to go down to the bottom of the mower here and uh, to install the brake uh, which when you when you go to brake the machine, it'll, it'll actually stop the roller. So it's, it's quite an important part to do. It's really simple to do. Let's get that bit fitted next. Okay, so around the back, um, you're going to have this this brake system. Okay, uh, which which in in, in all, all due respect, it's a rather good little design because you, you actually have a have a um, a handbrake for your mower. So if you have one on slant and you're going to your grass box out, you can just put a handbrake on, and uh, and away you go. So I, I quite like that little feature. Um, I think the only the only other thing with it is you might have to remove this um, uh, brake lever if you want to do an oil change, because uh, oil change a bit at the back here, um, unless you've got an extraction pump, of course, but if you haven't got an extraction pump, you just want to tip up on its bum to change the oil, then uh, yeah, you might have to do that. So all you've got to do is remove them two bolts, that goes in there like that, and then just put these two bolts back in. It's going to loosely fit them for now. One each side. Access is pretty good, but I've got quite big hands, so I'm known for that. Start them off, and you've got a couple of washers on there. One, one of them is a spring washer as well. Move that cable out of the way a touch. And then, we can then nick these up. This will be a bit of a long process, because you can't. I don't think you can get the ratchet spanner in there. Oh, you can, no, you can. That was just me being silly. Right. I'm going to nick them up. 
think you can get them so far. I mean, we'll go back to go back to just a, a socket, the spanner itself. So nick them up. There's two to do, and then that's your that's your own um, little handbrake done for your mower. And I'll show you how to operate that in just two seconds. Let me just get this one done up. I quite like the feature because, as I say, you've a, you can then op operate a handbrake system, which is fully adjustable as well, which is good. There you go. So that's your handbrake system now on. And if I just pull the lever for the handbrake, you see that moves. Handbrake on, and then go nowhere. So I quite like that little feature. Nice little handbrake. Let me show you how that works. Right, so with it all now in place, we've now got the drive sorted out. We've also got the, the cylinder sorted out. Over here's your throttle control as always. And then here you've got your handbrake. So the mower will now roll forwards and backwards, which is lovely. But if you wanted to stop it, you just apply the handbrake and then go nowhere. What a really good little design. So if you're on a hill and, and, you're, and you're, you're mowing away, something like that, not that you would be on, on massive hill areas with a cylinder mower, but if you have like an, like an incline, you can be mowing along quite happy, your grass box is full, apply the brake, set it to idle, go and empty your grass box, come back, grass box back on, fish bash bosh, away you go. I like that, good little feature. Okay, so we're pretty much there now, apart from one or two more things left to do, and that is we need to put some oil in this machine, and this machine will take um, 0.6 of a litre okay in, in this in this machine but just check your user manual it'll tell you in there or go on online and uh, and google how much your machine takes this has got the briggs and stratton um xr 550 um engine which is 127 cc's which goes up to around about 2800 rpm so just make sure that uh, you put the right oil in and the, and the correct amount um and then do you fill it up in here and then to do an oil change you have to take the brake off um which is no biggie two bolts and tip it up onto its bum to drain your oil out, but I should be showing you videos very shortly how to do that because I would recommend that you change your oil after five hours of running anyway. Just do a quick little um, oil flush out of it, get rid of it, that oil, because it's a brand spanking new machine. Get rid of it, although maybe a few bits and pieces in there from when the machine was made. So after five hours, I'd recommend doing a little oil change as well. So to fill it up, have a funnel. No spilling that oil now, oil now guys, because it's a brand new machine. So that goes into there, and then you want 0.6 of a litre. So I've got 600 millilitres here. I'm just going to put in uh, about 500 for now. And then I'm going to take the, uh, the funnel out and then we will just check the level, okay? So in that goes. We're not spilling it all, no lovely. I'm not spilling it all on a lovely big machine. I've got to say, this is a nice looking machine. It does look nice. Right, how far have we got? Another 100 mil, another 200 mil to put in yet. Let me get in there. Let's put another 100 in. Well, that should be a hundred. That should leave me. That should leave me a hundred mil. Not enough. Two less, yeah. But all I want to do is just make sure that I haven't overfilled it because overfilling it is uh, just as bad as underfilling. So let's let that settle down just for two seconds, and then we'll uh, we'll check the level. Okay, so that's been I've been sat there for about two or three minutes, and I can already see the oil is actually at the bottom of the threads, which is roughly where you want it. So let's have a little look. I'm going to screw, screw this in, take that back out, and then just read the level on the dipstick. So that actually says not quite enough, which is correct, because I've got another 100 mil here. So I'm going to put all of that in. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Really important, guys, to make sure you put the right amount of oil in. The machine's got to have it. Right, that is a full 0.6 of a litre. And as I say, I'd be looking to do an oil change after um, five hours of running. Now you can screw it in, and that'd be absolutely spot on. And of course, if you've made any spillages, get yourself a rag and wipe that off. Right, that's now done. And then the last thing we want to be doing is putting our fuel in. So just a quick word of advice with regards to fuel. Um, I wouldn't be running this machine on, on the E10 fuel. I'd be running it on super unleaded, uh, an, an, a, a, a ethanol free base or an Aspen fuel. Um, that way you have no problems with the ethanol because as soon as you undo this, this gas can on this uh, with E10 or E5, you're allowing moisture from the atmosphere in 
which will then clog up your carburetor and you'll be looking for a carburetor clean. So use Aspen or good quality uh, stabilizers or um, ethanol free fuel and you'll have no problems at all. So let me get this fuel back up uh, or fueled up and then uh, we'll go from there. We'll start, start the talk machine up. Okay, so now we're ready to start to fire this machine up. But what I would recommend to do is before you fire this machine up, okay, is to have the machine turned off. You've got on-off switch just here, okay? That's no drama. Just have the machine turned off, fuel turned off, choke turned off. And then give that machine about five or ten good solid pulls. Because what you want to do is to get that piston well lubricated before you actually get, get this machine to fire up. Give that about five or ten good pulls, okay? Piston nice and lubricated, plenty of oil around the system before you go to turn it on. And then when you're ready to turn it on, just turn the on switch to on. Um, choke it the machine if need be, which is all the way over. And then you've got a fuel on off here. Now I'm assuming, looking at it, that is fuel off all the way back. And then it's got arrow for petrol, so turn the fuel on that way. And just have a little bit of rabbit on the, on the controller up the top here. So just have it about quarter, okay? We'll choke the machine up and then give it a pull. And we can choke off. There you go. Now, just increase the rev slightly, just under, just under half. And then let that machine idle. Okay, just let that machine have, it, have its own, little five minutes of its own time idling away. Um, because you just want to make sure that engine's bedded in nice before you go flat out with it. The cylinder all works. Yeah, nice. So let the machine idle. And once you've done that, you're nearly ready for cutting. So there you go. Quick little video on your Cobra Fortis 20B cylinder mode. They also do a 17, a 14, and a 25. Grass bag, or grass box, like the color. Um, with regards to your literage, uh, on the 14, you get a 65 liter grass box. On the 17, you get a 65. On the 20, which is this one, you get a 75. And on the 25, you get a whopping 90 liter grass box. That's like a hammock, you could sleep in that. Also with regards to the cartridges, which you can get additionally, comes with the standard six blade cylinder, which goes from 30 millimeters down to six. And then you can get the 10 blade fine cut cylinder, which will take you down to three millimeters too. And the, and the cylinder blades look to be very, very hefty indeed. A serious amount of thickness there on the blades and plenty of life there for future grinding and back lapping. So that looks good. You can also get the, the Scarifier too, um, which is, uh, in itself a, a, a twin springed scarifying system. I can show you how to change those out later on in another video, no problem. But with regards to other attachments you can get for this, you can get the front roller, remove that, you can get a new groove roller. You can also get the lawn rake as well. They also do the 10 blade cylinder, they also do a lawn brush, they do a VersaCut, they do a defatcher. Man, they got, you, they, they got you made. Now, to do your, your height control, it's just one lever here, okay? W w one twist knob feature here, which will take you from 30 millimeters down to, down to six, and then with a fine cut down to three. But just be mindful that um, they also give you a tool as well on how to set the cut accurately. And in another video, I'll be showing you how to actually set the cut exactly right. So there is a gauge here, which will give you sort, sort of a, a rough a rough guide, okay, to where, where you want to be. Um, but if you're after precision cutting, we actually provide you with a tool that you can actually put onto this machine and set the height to 8.5 millimeters. If that's what you want to do, I'll show you how to do that in a future video. I'll also be showing you how to do in future videos, how to take the side cover off and how to, how to do your um, change of cassettes, how to replace your, your, your belts and bits and pieces inside, all that sort of stuff. So hopefully if you subscribe to this channel, and ring the bell notification, set it to all. If you've got any issues with your um, Cobra Fortis, you want to have a quick, a quick little um, repair. Say your belts have slipped off, or, or, or for some reason you can't get your scarifier in for whatever reason. Future videos could help you out and get you up and mowing in no time at all. All in all, I'm glad Fortis um, Cobra sent me this, this cylinder mower here for me to review. Um, it is going back, it's not mine. It's just been sent to me for purpose of review, just so I can get my hands on it. This is brand spanking new for 2023, a bit late in the season. But it's here, and uh, do you know what? Yeah, I would. Just, I don't think Mrs. P would like it. <laughs> I'd definitely have one. It's a serious looking bit of kit, so yeah, super, super happy with that. So subscribe to the channel for more videos, and uh, if you want to see more videos on how to um, do certain bits and pieces with your Cobra Fortis lawnmower, check out my channel.